I said, how are you doing? Everybody feeling good tonight? I'm having a good time. These stories have been really inspiring. I'm really uh, just uh, amazed by uh, the transparency and the ways in which uh, you all have chosen to be so revealing with certain items from your personal lives. I'm, uh, I've done some acting, as Satori has said, but I always get kind of closed off and uncomfortable when I try to uh, tell my story. Satori tried two or three times to get me to come and tell a story, and I always start freezing up. I'm like, Satori, it's not a character, it's just me, or it's not just a song. And so she invited me to come sing, but she said, you can't just sing the song. You have to tell the story with it. So. I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to be transparent and hopefully <laughs> through this experience, five minutes from now, we will all have grown and gained something, okay? All right, we're gonna start. Born by the river in a little tent, oh, and just like that river, I've been running, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know. Change is going to come. When I was in the second grade, my favorite white person in the world was Miss Hartfoot. She was my teacher. Um, I loved her. She just was so kind. She would give us cookies. I really, really loved Miss Hartfoot because of just how uh, compelling and how generous she was and everything like that. I really had a hard time believing that white people had done anything bad to black people within this country because of Miss Hartfoot. Uh, it's like, you know, white people give me cookies. What y'all talking about racism? You know what I'm saying? Miss Hartford is always giving me A's on my paper. What you mean, lynchings? It just didn't make sense to me. Uh, but as I started to, you know, grow and um, begin to internalize the struggle of uh, my descendants, my ancestry across this country, I was like, wait a minute, white people. Uh-uh, this ain't right. What made y'all think that this was acceptable? And um, as I started to mature and grow and became from being a young black child to being a young black man, I started to have those experiences that many of my peers and elders spoke about. And uh, I believe that Alex is gonna sing a little bit about that. It's been too hard to live in. What's up there in the sky? It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. So in high school, I would do different performances and academic game tournaments and things like that. Uh, not really knowing that I was any different from people. So we would go to like Ann Arbor Trail, middle and elementary schools, and it would be like people would start looking at us like we were different. And I was like, wait a minute, maybe maybe it's not quite the same. So uh, I, I've dealt with people's ignorances. I've been given the middle finger just for existing. One time we took a trip to Flint. Somebody asked me if I was made of chocolate as a joke, and I just didn't you know, quite understand it. So I was just able to kind of internalize those things. Uh, when I was in my 20s, I started working in film production, uh, trying to, you know, learn, get a leg up in this industry as an actor, go in the back door and everything. And I had to try to be a PA, uh, a production assistant, which essentially you're just everybody's bitch on that film set. Everybody owns you. Uh, and they talk about you and it's, uh, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. And so me, you know, coming from having this Afro-centered education and having parents that instill so much into me, I was like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna be great at this film and I'm gonna get a job in the future out of that. And it didn't happen. And one of the uh, producers on the film that I responded to uh, went through this whole period of trying to break us down and beat us down. She was a white woman. And she told us, she was not from the city of Detroit, but she told me, 
that she owned me, that I belonged to this production. I essentially belonged to her. And I remember I was, you know, you know how people say something, they stop you for a second, like, <laughs> wait a minute, you got me confused. Um, I said, uh, not in Detroit, not today, you don't owe me, you don't owe anything. And she went on to say, well, if somebody would have said that to me, I would have just sucked it up, it wouldn't have meant anything to me. And I'm like, that's because you a white woman. I'm a black man in Detroit. You can't just come here and say that you own people. And it was hurt. And it felt like I was now being the jerk for expressing the fact that I was hurt about this situation. And I didn't understand it. Go ahead, Rachel. When I go to the movies And I go downtown Somebody keeps telling me to this present day um, where it just seems like every other week somebody who looks like me, a black male, black female, is being just slaughtered. It's like it's open season on black people. We are in season this season, not fashion, not trending, but it's just, it's, it's popular to start killing people. And I find myself at times uh, being in uh, fear for my own life, being around uh, friends that I have made, people that I know just because of everything that is happening within the world. And uh, Sam Cooke actually wrote this song uh, after he had experienced an injustice. He was trying to um, get checked in at a hotel, a holiday in down in Shreveport, Louisiana. And they looked at him and said, no, you're black, you can't be here, we're all booked up. And he just remembered how that made him feel and started to write these lyrics to this song. And it, it hurts, because this song is 50 years old. On Monday, December 22nd, this song will be 50 years old. It was released on December 22nd, 50 years ago. But the lyrics sound like they could have been wrote, written last night. When I go, when I go to my brother, and I say, brother, 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 could you, would you help me please? But he just keeps knocking me, 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 right back on my feet. There was a time when I thought Now I know that I'm able to carry on And it's been a long time coming And it's been a long time coming It's been a long time coming it's been a long time coming. Not too long ago, I had a chance to meet uh, Dr. Terrence Roberts. You all may be familiar with him. He was one of the Little Rock Nine, uh, who during the 1950s, he was selected or actually volunteered to go and desegregate Central Little Rock High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, he's about 73 years old now, and he's made really, really big advances in sociology, psychology, he's a doctor. And um, in the meeting, the encounter that we had, he said something um, that I've really taken to heart and have really worn it. Um, he said that uh, he does not harbor any resentment towards white people. And I was like, wait a minute, they stopped you from going to school. Like they, they told you, you know, that you were less than, that you did not belong. He said he does not harbor any resentment towards white people because over the 73 years that he has lived, he has learned that all white people are not bad, and that all black people are not good. And that took a, you know, it was like, whew, like just kind of took the breath out of me really quickly. That somebody who literally, literally looked hate in the face, had people tell him to go home, that he was disgusting, he did not belong there at the age of 16, has been able to forgive, has been able to not push that past experience on future opportunities. And I said, if Dr. Terrence Roberts can forgive, then surely I can. 
So when I think about issues like Trayvon Martin, I think about issues like Renisha McBride, and I think about issues like Eric Garner, I say, there are still good people in this world. There are still good people who are trying. There are still good people who are making a difference. One of my best friends from high school, uh, she married a white guy. Um, and I remember, uh, I was like, Temperance, what you doing? What's going on? What's that all about? And I had a chance to interact with him. Uh, kind of had a conversation, and I was going through a really depressing time. And do you know, God gave him the exact words I needed to hear, and we have become really, really, really good friends. Like, he's one of my best friends. We talk every single Sunday. We pray. Uh, we call it a brothership, brother time that we have. And um, whenever anything bad is happening in the world or an issue of segregation or discrimination, I text him. I say, Jason, you're a good person. I text him. I say, Jason, I love you. I say, Jason, you are my brother. Jason, you mean the world to me. I don't know what I would do if I did not have you. And then for the first time, I have a friend who does not look like me that I am able to be completely transparent with, not worry about them judging me, not worry about them uh, having different ideas about who I should be. I can talk to him about racism, and it's cool, and it's okay. And I realize that we both have so many ignorances that we are always able to kind of talk about and learn from each other, that we honestly are not that different. And so. I because of that relationship, because of my interaction with Dr. Terrence Roberts, I'm foolish enough to believe in the message of this song that change can come, change will come. So I'm looking past what is happening in the news right now. I am trying to look past every time I turn on the TV and get bombarded with somebody being dead to believe that change is coming. So white people, I love you. Black people, I love you. Everybody in this room, I love you because I know we're all trying. And it's been a long, 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 long time. It's been a long, 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 long time. It's been a long, 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 long time. It's been a long, 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 long time. But I know change is going to come. Change is going to come. Yes, I know change is going to come. Change is going to come. Yes, I know 